Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Farida, Dr. Taha, my friend, and other distinguished colleagues working in Manu and No, and the teaching force of Manu, who has been recently recruited. And this is, I hear, is an induction program. I extend a very happy good afternoon to all of you. And in fact, when we discussed with the organizers, I've been asked to give this interactive talk sometime next week, but I got a call asking me to advance my presentation for this time and day. I'm here. So glorious afternoon to all of you. And I want to thank the, and the professor who has introduced me in such uh, flowery words. Thank you very much, sir. I'll try to live up to the, the introduction that you have uh, just said out. Can you hear me, everyone? Okay, thank you. Yes. Last side. Thank you very much. The topic uh, that has been uh, given to me to give this presentation, I would like to have this talk interactive and sometimes I might ask you to chip in. You can use the chat box or you can use your mic to also talk back because it's an induction program, should not be one-sided. And I would like to have it what Mikhail Bakhtin postulated as literature being dialogic. I would also like to have this, this presentation, dialogic, interactive, and given an opportunity in the face-to-face -face mode, I would conduct these programs in the form of a workshop, requesting all you to diligently take part in this activity. So the topic is uh, teaching, learning, assessment or evaluation, and that all of us actually engage ourselves in day in and day out as academicians, as teachers. I would like to use the word mostly, and I love it, teacher, rather than using other positions like professors or, or assistant professors. So when I say teacher, it means all those things. Please bear with me. So I'm postulating that uh, these, I'm, I'm also thinking loudly that the categories of teaching, categories of learning, categories of evaluation and some other are not distinct terms. Actually, they are, they are hand in glove with each other. One leads to the other. And that's how, that's how there is a synergy and very productive one at that when we try to capsulate the the hidden nuances of these categories of teaching, learning, evaluation, or assessment or testing in, in language parlance, especially in language education, we don't use the word assessment, we use testing and evaluation, but they mean the same since, uh, since the, the participants of this induction program are from across uh, the curriculum that are social sciences and sciences and tech, teachers teaching technology, teachers teaching engineering, teachers teaching general sciences, literatures in different languages, especially Urdu and, and English. So I, I would not use um, uh, or, or limit my talk only to teaching of language in general, or English language in particular, but I would certainly try to draw examples from general education, trying to accommodate, you know, this uh, multitudinal, uh, you know, the, the faculties that have different, uh, different disciplines, those are teaching at Manu and other places. So I say that these categories require some kind of a dressing down. We need to make some adjustments in order to accommodate the, the, the set of students who come from different backgrounds. That's the, that's the main idea. So 
I'm, I'm saying that we need to make innovation to our conventional mode of communication in the classroom. And there are certain pressing sociological, pressing psychological, demanding, highly demanding, demanding uh, you know, so reasons for asking to make adjustments to, to the kind of practice that we are, we are all into. So first question that I would like to ask the newly, newly recruited faculty, please be proactive to, to say some things about what are the challenges that we face as teachers? What challenges have you encountered first time when you faced your learners? I use learners because we use it in our, in our area, but we can also use students. I would like a, 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 I would like a category which all of you please hereafter think about it very seriously that let's not use the word students, let's not use any other thing that is that is passivity, you know, passivity inscribed in it, but let's use words like participants because they're also expected to participate in the learning. I would like to ask all of you as participants, what challenges that you face as teachers? Could you please use your chat box and write kind of challenges that you've already faced. This is the first thing that I would ask you to innovate yourself. Chat boxes, what, are the, what challenges have you faced when you first face your classroom? You can use your mic as well. May I ask, sir, Abhi, uh, Abdul Khalik, what would you like to say about the kind of challenges that you have faced when you face your classroom? Uh, that is Madam Rubina Khan. You yes, like sir. Yes, yes sir. What uh, actually, huh, uh, I'm uh, working in Bhopal, city Bhopal. The challenges Bhopal. Uh, which I faced as a teacher when I first went to the classes were that the students were from very diverse background. Absolutely. And they were coming from all uh, the strata of the society. And they were coming from various uh, rural and urban backgrounds. So okay. in order to provide them the examples uh, relevant to their field, so Wonderful. I have to put my mind uh, regarding this. I have to be prepared on diverse uh, uh, things that they were uh, from. That's very, very interesting and enlightening enlightening observation, madam, that will really help me, you know, strengthen my stand that we've got to change and change for better. And that change has to accommodate. We accommodate the other, accommodate the, the sections of society which have been kept away from, from, the, from the, you know, spaces of education. Thank you very much. Any other, Dr. Salauddin Saab? Yeah, good afternoon, Professor Prendy, sir. That's yes, really kind of you to hear things. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are, yeah. you are. Yeah, like Rubina, Dr. Rubina has clearly mentioned, we receive people mostly like being in Urdu University, people coming from very underprivileged socio-economical backgrounds. And right, the prerequisite knowledge which yeah. they need to participate in dialogues, asking questions is very challenging. The most Absolutely. important thing is how we can draw a path or how we can adapt things which will help them to connect with this previous knowledge so that they can follow the lectures. Because we wow. have both. Those who are coming from the cities and little bit privileged backgrounds, they have a chance to learn these things. But mostly, like here in Manu, I'm a chemistry associate professor. I teach chemistry here. And the most important thing is people, the students are a bit hesitative when they are not having those prerequisite knowledge or prerequisite information. I can't say knowledge, but information. It's a bit challenging for a teacher to complete everything in that certain given time. And especially now, this. Uh, pandemic times. I would appreciate if you could share your experience with us, how we can deal with that. Wonderful. Thank you, Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. You almost echoed 
the same observation that Dr. Rubina has just pointed out. Any other, this is related to, you know, the urban, rural, diversified sections attending the same class, as well as unable to reach, what examples do we, do we have to bring into the class in order to reach the, the entire cross-section of our, our society, which is there in our classroom? Any other, any other? Sheikh Samiha, doctor, right? Dr. Sheikh Samika, would you like to say something, madam? Ma'am, I can't hear you. There's some problem with your microphone. Video, yes, but microphone is, seems to be some problem. All right. Uh, no, I can't hear you. May I ask uh, Dr. Rubina to mute your mic so that, uh, you know, Dr. Rubina, yeah. And also, Dr., uh, there is one more mic which is also on, is VC's conference hall co-host, Mike is, because it's making some noise over here. That's fine. And I, any other whose mic, uh, you know, can be heard? Because these elicitations are important to direct the talk because I just do not want to go by, go by with preconceived ideas, ideas that I think are of greater value to my talk, instead ideas or the challenges that you face, if I use as background in order to enunciate the kind of uh, you know, talk that I've planned is, is I think more topical, more useful. Any other, any other? Okay, uh, if yes. nobody's there, yeah. Madam, yes. who's that? Yeah. May I audible, sir, now? Yes, you are audible. Yes, Thank you so much, sir, and very good afternoon uh, to you, all of you. Uh, sir, actually, uh, I'm working in uh, Manu City, Aurangabad, and I deal with uh, Urdu methodology. And yes, as a uh, Urdu methodology teacher, I come to know that the students have many uh, problems uh, regarding Urdu language. They come with uh, poor language knowledge, uh, even uh, reading and writing problems related to reading and writing and uh, uh, poor basic knowledge. Okay. okay These are yeah. the, some few problems which I face. That's, okay. Thank okay, you, madam. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any other sociological issues, classroom related issues that you face? Uh, anybody else? Because... Uh, uh, Hi. Uh, what, yeah. yeah. Dr. Uh, Mustajab uh, Khatir. Yeah, I'm not a doctor, unfortunately, as yet. But anyways. You, you, you will be. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, and one of the issues that I face is uh, utter lack of ambition amongst the students. All right. uh, sometimes okay. what happens is uh, you want them to perform well. And you have a very rosy idea as to how you want to lead them on a path of you know, higher ambitions. You want them to clear the net exams or do something in their research but uh, they are not much concerned about those aspects of, in their oh. you know, pursuit of education. They just want to have a degree or they just want to get back to some kind of a job or something. So how to make sure that they start to learn and in, in a way which is more ambitious than just to you know, fall prey to the utter basic All needs. Right. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you very much for your feedback. And I think I've stopped here to continue my 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 talk. And thank you very much for for your willingness to contribute to this discussion. And others, may I request, please switch off your mics, everybody. Everybody, mute your mics, everybody, so that uh, we'll not have a clash of the clash of voices resulting in only noise, but not any this course coming up. So I understand now that uh, see, there are certain problems and many actually related to the, the personality of the learners, related to the, to the sociology of learners, related to the multicultural nature, diversified, you know, tapestry of learners coming in, sitting in front of us in the classes and how to deal with such, such learners is the question. And I'm, I, I specifically use this, this kind of uh, reasons for going for changes in the way we conduct our 
transaction in the classrooms i will now so these are the some of the challenges that you have already put forth now what i'm going to do in this in this session is in this talk is a briefly i discuss the praxis in vogue of the teaching learning and postulate adjustment to make learning more inclusive that's what dr rubina has been saying with regards to the diverse backgrounds and students learners come and sit in front in front of me in the class from all strata of society now how do we make make them be part of a learning make them more inclusive and the learning inclusive natural and enjoyable i'll make a case for innovation by citing convincing reasons that have cropped up since the time we as a country became first independent and then and and the jolting situation that has really happened that has made our thinking and our society understand things in a in a you know topsy turvy that has made the, the globalization thirdly i'll identify the areas that require innovation while firmly establishing the category of learning centered classrooms please understand you would have by now heard about teacher centered classrooms you would have also heard about the learner centered at but i am postulating going for the third one where we we got the full presence of both the teacher and learner uh, towards what's called creating something called a space for learning centered classrooms i'll conclude the talk by learning by 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 say by saying that learning happens not as a result of the presence of the teacher or the learner it's indeed the sum total of the cooperative activity of what i term the learning stakeholders all come together in order to construct learning learning doesn't happen learning is not something a neatly parcel pack that can be handed over to the learners by the teachers instead i am fixing responsibility of learning not to one person called teacher but there are i say stakeholders of learning they are all the members of the learning cooperative that we are going to construct uh, in the next 30 to 40 minutes uh, may i ask the organizers uh, dr taha how much time do you think i have for me all right let's see now the sequence how it's it's going to happen first i discuss what innovation and then ask questions why innovation and i'll certainly take the feedback that i've taken in order to substantiate why innovation and then i enlist the areas of innovation and and finally i'll conclude the the talk with the you know logically in in line with the kind of arguments that we have here now firstly i would like to clarify the the notion of innovation in the context of innovate invention now what's in a invention and how innovation is to be understood in fact they are not they are not opposite and they are extension of one to the other first is invention creating something new and it could be a process it could be a practice it could be a device or an object or a gadget so creating something completely new and now what innovation innovation are changes or change made to an existing process or an existing practice or an existing device for instance we here at 3:30 pm today not inventing the practices of teaching but what are we going to do we were presenting we are we are we, are, we want to have certain changes happen to the practice that we do day in and out as teachers so this is a that change some changes to be brought into the practice of uh, teaching and that i'm i'm going to i'm going to make a case for innovations in the way we transact with our learners learners yeah now look at this picture you will know you'll understand invention and innovation you know this this mobile phone was first invented and later so much has been added to this mobile phone now it's called smartphone having a lot of features and smartphone has not been invented and it was an innovation innovated or liberated or 
a lot of features have been added to a gadget which has already been invented. So teaching is yeah, mobile, you can see invention Nokia and what we are asking for changes to happen, this activity of teaching and learning, are call, we are calling for changes in that profession, in that activity and innovation we are asking for. Teaching or training, I think I'll skip it because it may not require here. And now next question is why innovation? What are the reasons for innovation? One of the reasons for innovation, I would like to say that when teaching and learning originally happened in the Gurukula style, in ancient Indian system of uh, education, and there, what all the teachers taught used to be the knowledge. There were no textbooks, there were no, there were no curriculum, and there was no methodology, and all that the teachers spoke used to be the knowledge, and speaking was the only mode of teaching in, in those days, and that tradition, I think, seems to be still going on in our schools and colleges. That's why today's learners have a diverse, different, and uh, multicultural, multilingual, and different social worlds they bring into the class when they come in here. But earlier, when learning happened based on teachers' talk, based on teachers' enunciation, based on teachers, whatever he thought was the subject where they used to speak, and speaking was the only mode those days because, because the teacher and the learner used to come from the same social worlds. They used to have the same ideology. They, just, they, they used to come from the same social background. That's why teacher talk used to be understood very well. But today, as Dr. Rubina, as Dr. Salauddin, very poignantly pointed out that my classroom, although space-wise it's one, although attendance-wise it's one, although culture-wise it's one, although belief system-wise it may be one, however, within that one, there are several worlds. She used the word diverse backgrounds my learners come from, and we have uh, learners from all the strata of society, and some are urban learners, some are rural learners, some are semi. So how do I communicate with that diversified and divided in terms of comprehension level classroom? This is, in my view, situation critical. Dr. Salauddin also echoed what Dr. Rubina said, that we have students in our, in our classes, those who are from underprivileged uh, you know, social classes, there are students who are from the poor background and whose ability to communicate is barely minimum. So my kind of language that I use in the class is not reaching them. This is, what would I do now? These are some of the, you know, very painful realities, painful, uh, you know, problems, challenges that I face. Although I would like to reach out to all the nooks and corners of the classroom, though space-wise it is very small, but in terms of uh, conducting the communication and making it comprehend is a big issue. Could you please help us? And this, these are all things that we share in day in and day out. And I use them as background for asking for innovation. Now, other reasons why. You know, we got to for innovations for diversified reasons. You know, classroom, although space-wise is very small and same, but the occupants of the participants of that classroom do not have the same ideological background, same social background, same economic background, same cultural background. And that, that diverse backgrounds require to be required to be addressed in the same class time. How do I do? It's a very pressing problem. Now, I've also enlisted some more reasons. I guess you can also elaborate on what I'm trying to read them out from this uh, PPT. One is success of the welfare programs. After we became independent, the government, successive governments, 
at the central and state level came up with so many social welfare programs thereby thereby people who have been denied this cultural capital what's cultural capital bodhi's concept of cultural capital is education primarily access to access to places of knowledge access to places of wisdom was not possible but slowly as the as the social welfare programs success of social welfare schools success of other you know empowering empowerment programs of uh, various governments have slowly encouraged people who have been denied education for ages to start walking into our classrooms this is one reason next one emergence of multilingual multicultural classroom although people may have the same religious background but economically socially and they are not same so that this this diversified i'm trying to explain multilingual in nature although urdu may be the same but urdu is not uniformly uniformly distributed urdu in north india is different urdu in lucknow is different urdu in in uttar pradesh is different urdu in in hyderabad is different within hyderabad there are various dialects so that's where i am trying to say multilingual multi dialectal producing multicultural belief system wise they may have the same they may have the sameness however but the kind of lifestyles they lead on account of uh, poverty on account of uh, you know difference that that's available in their life also you know reasons for for thinking seriously about bringing changes to the way we communicate in our classroom number the, the point uh, uh, next point i would like to also say as a reason asking us to go for innovation is liberation from the teacher talk monotony teacher talk is no doubt monotony the teacher speaks continuously what happens nothing happens except teacher teacher you know spending all his breakfast and after that if he has classes after lunch teacher is expending all his lunch by talking why have you reduced learning to to listening to teachers talk so teachers talk as i'm sure dr rubina dr salaudin and other distinguished uh, um, you know teaching fraternity of manu will agree with me that talking is not teaching talking is not at all teaching and talking is expending our own energy and teaching should also also bring in what is called learning we may talk and finish the syllabus but does it really contribute to learning is teaching is teaching equal to learning and those teachers who know that completing syllabus is teaching would certainly say that yes teaching is not learning most of the time teaching is the teacher's job and learning is the learner's job and there is a huge divide between these two in terms of ideology in terms of class in terms of in terms of race in terms of uh, you know social strata so what mechanism is required to be required to replace this teacher talk monotony in order to produce more cathartic effects of learning in the classroom and i will say that uh, there are interactive games and many of the learners are, are aware of uh, of uh, this fact that we should not treat our our students as mere souls epitome of ignorance it's not so and we should always encourage our our students don't use the word kind of kindly uh, students but you should you should replace the word student as participants once once you say participants they also have equal participation in the activity of constructing learning they should not be relegated or dismissed as passive listeners passive learners and we must also give them equal responsibility in the construction of positive learning construction of active learning by by calling them as participants 
what kind of participants are they there's the participants of learning and therefore it will also lead to what's called autonomy autonomous learning even in the absence of teacher learners will take that responsibility to produce learning and these these reasons these reasons strengthen my my thinking that we have to go for adjustment we have to go for changes we have to go for what i term the title of my talk as innovation to teaching to learning and to the activities of uh, of assessment now what are the areas to be innovated if innovation has to happen innovation for inclusivity innovation for better classroom communication innovation to 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 make even the even the slow learners even the reticent learners even the learners who are not interested show interest in in the classroom to take part actively in the construction of knowledge what are the areas to be innovated innovated liberated areas to be emancipated if you don't like this heavy words and i can also use a smaller soft word the areas to be to be adjusted these are the areas nothing new and i would postulate therefore i would i would like to have a classroom which is based on learning centered classroom not teacher centered classroom not learner centered classroom but it is a learning centered classroom what are the problems with teacher centered classrooms we can also have a discussion on this since it's the first time that you're going to have a talk of this kind maybe in future when we have uh, when we have space and more time we can have a workshop type of uh, type of enunciations uh, to understand this category as well teacher centered classroom to put simply it's the teacher's job teacher walks into the class teacher opens the textbook teacher reads out teacher explains in different languages teacher writes answers or meanings on the board teacher wipes up the board teacher takes attendance teacher finish the syllabus and finishing the syllabus is completing education what happens where is the learner here learner is a is a participant of his activity learner's presence is is merely to make him employed and make him get his salary every month in a teacher centeredness therefore teacher talk all the way because there are traditions which have made teachers like that and the traditions when we did not have textbook the tradition when we did not have curriculum the traditions when we did not say what is knowledge what's wisdom what's information what is to get into the textbook then we depended on somebody's talk and that talk is still being continued even after we have all those facilities of curriculum facilities of knowledge system what is to take into the textbook and what's not possible in the textbook but the mode of uh, presentation in the classroom still for for i think 90% of spaces still remains teacher centeredness in the teacher centeredness the important participant who is missing is the learner learner is no way to be seen now if you look at the learner centered classroom who is missing teacher is missing learners can't learn on their own teacher's role is also essential textbook is also essential classroom practice also is essential university is essential funding is essential administration is essential classroom is essential but where are there that's why i say we need the teacher we also need the learner and the presence of the teacher is to cause learning but presence of the teacher seems to be completing the syllabus reading out the textbook writing the question and then awarding marks when the learners fail and there are grace marks so this system has to has to go and that's where i say that uh, that uh, teacher centered classroom has to be replaced now why do the learners come to classroom learners come to classroom to learn can they learn on their own no how do they do it they do it only in the presence of the teacher or in the facilitation of the teacher so therefore we need both 
teacher and learner, but in the teacher-centered classroom, learner is missing. In the learner-centered classrooms, teacher seems to be missing, but we need both. We can see them in the third category that I'm, I'm, I'm you know, fighting for, I'm supporting is learning-centered classroom because the presence of the teacher is to cause learning and the learner come to class to learn. So why not a learning-centered classroom instead of a teacher-centered or a learning-centered? This learning-centered classroom will address the issues that Dr. Rubina has pointed out, address the issues that Dr. Salahuddin and many others who wanted to say, but due to paucity of time, we could not elicit their views on, on what they face as challenges in their efforts to conduct learning. So first change that has to happen is that the classrooms have to be turned into learning-centered classrooms where teacher and the learner put their hands together because their presence calls for learning and learning is of paramount importance. That's why the first change that has to be brought into the classroom is to make it learning oriented and centered on learning. And the next point uh, is that, what are the areas, okay, areas that help us in, in, in liberating our present uh, praxis of uh, education? What are the areas? Those areas are, are first is, uh, look at here, these are the areas. First is the classroom. Our classroom has to be changed. Changed to accommodate, changed to accommodate the, the, you know, diverse backgrounds learners, learners coming from diverse backgrounds, learners having lo so different social strata of our society they bring into the classroom. Although if you give them uniform, everybody seems okay, but every learner has his or her own social world. How do we break through that glass and, and make, make our classes uh, you know, that's why I say that classroom is one area that requires to be changed, that requires to be innovated, liberated. Another person is the teacher. I don't see that teacher or teaching is rosy and everything is rosy here. Yeah. Teacher's role also requires to be recast and revisited in the context of the kind of uh, diversified learners that come to our class. In other words, the learner himself has to change. Learner is being treated, is being treated very well in the classroom because the teacher comes in and makes a lot of entertainment to the learner by speaking continuously or reading from the textbook. The, the learner's role will have to be recast in terms of what we have just now uh, postulated, uh, uh, voted for what's called the learning centered classroom. Learning materials, learning materials, and uh, Dr. Salahuddin and Dr. Rubina are very well, again, I take these two names because they are representing the entire teaching fraternity of not only of Manu, but the entire country, I must say, because our, our country is, is a diversified one. People say there is unity in diversity, as Pandit Nehru said, unity will just, I know there is unity, but that's not our area, but we're looking at the diversity that becomes a big issue for, for conducting our profession as teachers. So therefore learning materials, what materials do you see in the textbook? Urban-centered materials, upper-class material, but the learners do not have anything to do with the kind of social world that is, that is captured in our textbooks, which means learners feel alienated. Now, I'll come to that later. So this is, these are the areas that require changes. And another area is delivery methods. Delivery methods, the methodology that the teacher follows in the classroom. And of course, finally, what our topic also talks about, assessment, evaluation, and testing. These are the areas. I think you would be surprised to see these things. Do they require changes? In fact, they are very commonplace items. We, we often overlook them, but they require first uh, a lot of uh, serious thinking 
to recast them in the in the interest to to make uh, you know the make our classrooms and learning inclusive the accommodate the other is the main main objective of our our education system so classroom is one area that requires to be changed teacher learner learning materials i mean textbooks what i mean delivery method what the teacher does in the classroom evaluation that we have only at the at the summative instead i would back for what is called the formative level of evaluation now what is these these i call the partners of learning the stakeholders of learning they are the pillars of learning they are the important agents of learning and these agents we need to recast them because of the kind of classroom profile that we we get year after year which is not homogeneous our classes are to use the word technical word heterogeneous heterogeneous in terms of caste in terms of color in terms of class in terms of economy in terms of cultural capital in terms of sociology social worlds city urban village so we've got to accommodate them that's why i say that these partners of learning they they have a very very important role to play in the construction of uh, positive learning that's why what is the classroom that we have today and what sort of a classroom is today and you can see it here the kind of classroom please pardon me i got this only picture school picture i think you can also see that it is analogous to the kind of classrooms that we we visit and our, our our learning happen what kind of a classroom is it is a general general typical indian classroom immovable seating and furniture look at that learners are caged between the writing desk and the bench right immovable furniture in fact each or piece of that furniture has been tightly fastened to the floor they are completely immovable once you enter one one corner of the class it takes hell of a time to get out of it because the because of the kind of architecture of the classroom that houses the furniture second one crowded classrooms well we can't help it that's the situation but crowded classrooms teachers always in teachers place you can you can you see this 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 uh, lady can she move about in the in the classroom it's impossible she is she has been barricaded from going across to the learners because of the kind of uh, teacher is always in teacher's place learners caged between the desk and the bench no place no scope for both the teacher and the learners to move about but today's ideology of learning is not this this kind of uh, class requires to be changed this is today and first let's look at the look at look at this our learning partners and what kind of state of affairs is happening with them classroom next one the teacher the teacher god macol has a book i think some of you can read it teacher man he migrates uh, from from ireland in 19 in the 40s or 50s to america then they become a teacher it's interesting book those who are interested you know in trying to learn from other teachers that's a good book teacher man but in our society teacher is no more a man teacher god because we always uh, venerate our teachers venerate our gurus that kind of aryan uh mentality and aryan philosophy is still going on right so guru the teacher is highly venerated the teacher today is fixed to teacher space teacher acts as a dictator i think those who 
would have had education in the traditional mode would know what kind of a teachers we used to have in our classes. And I remember the country, countryside in Telangana, how teaching happened or happened those days. And always, I think I would see only two persons wielding a wand and going around, wielding a stick. One, the policeman, another used to be the teacher. I had never seen any of my teachers walking into the class without a stick in their hand. So teacher as a dictator, whatever the teacher said would be the word God sent. So that kind of paid speaker, in fact, uh, always talks and lectures and talking is teaching and lecturing is enough. Don't you listen to me? If you did not listen to me, because listening is another problem, because the kind of, uh, I think Dr. Rubina is a very intelligent teacher. And I mean, she has a lot of critical thinking. She also talks about examples. What examples do I bring into that classroom, which is, which is stitched together with diverse learners occupying, learners occupying, well, with diverse backgrounds occupying the same space. What examples can I bring in so that everybody in the classroom would understand? Because there are strata, social strata, you know, uh, people coming from different social backgrounds occupy the same space. If I bring in one example from one start of society and other learners from other very sensitive uh, uh, points she has bring out, I'm very happy that, uh, you know, such a, I would certainly quote these examples in my future classes that, you know, bringing examples is not easy. Teacher has to be very thoughtful what examples we should, we should bring in. This also matters a lot. So a paid speaker, today because he you you remember especially some of you where the teacher is a paid speaker is a speaker talks continuously remember test this when you are in the class you are exhorting and you are you are on a verbal diarrhea and suddenly you see that your vice chancellor or registrar your head of the department is passing by what would you do it is instinctive for all teacher teacher talkers that they raise their voice and speak so that your boss will, will get to hear that you're not wasting your time, you're doing your job. What job? Job of talking. So today's teachers are condemned speakers. And another stakeholder of learning is our student classroom. Teacher, student. What kind of a student do we have today? Firstly, they are students. Students means passive, passive learners. They only learn, expected to learn at least from the teacher's talk, but most of the time it doesn't happen. That's why they depend on, on you know, some material which is cheaply available outside. Learn only from the teacher God to this. Well, supposedly learn, they learn, some, yes, they will learn. Whether there is teacher or not, they'll certainly learn. They're well groomed to be a student, to be passive and silent. Used to spoon feeding, we dictate a question and also every damn word that, that fills in as answer to that question. No scope to learn from peers and others. Look at the kind of classroom. Is there a way that we could conduct any activity? Impossible. No pair work, no mono. Pair work, group work, project work. We can't let them out indeed. Even, even all the students going out, it will take more than 10 minutes. So that kind of a classroom situation. There is no scope facility available for the learners to learn from peers and, and others. And another learning partner, stakeholder, is materials, learning materials, textbooks. We don't know who prepared them actually. Prepared by somebody, somewhere, using his own, uh, his own ideology, his own interests, his own tastes of society. And I think there's a huge generation gap between the tastes that, that are wrapped in the textbook, ideology that is structured into the textbook, and the ideology of learner, the gap is almost 30 to 40 years. 
Usually, retired teachers have been asked to produce material, but the learners is a huge gap. And they find it, some learners sometimes ask teacher, is it a, is it a learning session or history classroom? Because of the kind of taste, the kind of ideology, the kind of lifestyles that get to the textbook is a big issue. We don't take learners into account. Textbook writers decide. So materials is one, one uh, you know, important item that also requires to be changed because I think we are running out of time. Delivery methods. What are the delivery methods today? Today's delivery method is only one, lectures. Lectures, a lot of board work, talks, explanations in different languages. Read, read the text from the book, explain in Chase Urdu, local Urdu, dialect. So there's a big hassle of explaining and sometimes you got to translate into local dialect. Translation doesn't mean from one language to the other. Translation also comes for, happens from, from one main language to another dialect. Now, evaluation system, this is a pathetic situation today. Learners not at all involved. We always dismiss our learners as, as, as you know, um, blank heads. That's why we don't take them into confidence at all. We don't ask them, hey, what would you like? What question would you like? What type of questions would you like? Is it always the WH question? Is it always the essay type of question? Therefore, learners not involved today, summative tests only, semester in exams or year in exams outside, no feedback, I think, including, including, I think you will not, uh, you will agree with me when I say that we never give feedback to our learners on their performance. We only award grades. When they fail, there are easy solutions. Now, how would a classroom look like when it is liberated? So these are the liberated sections of classes, movable furniture. But for me, if there is no furniture, is that good? Instead of having furniture of that kind where, where learners can't move from one place to the movement also contributes to learning. Otherwise, it is, it is making them caged, putting them behind the bars. Teacher can reach the learners. Look at the space over here. There's no fixed division. You can't even find where the teacher and they are. Teacher in, a teacher's, in our original classrooms every day, we know how much space we can rule over. And, and it's been earmarked. There's a raised platform. You mount the platform. You go and stand in front of the, you know, that podium, what's called pulpit in, in religious language. And from there, we, we you know, give uh, our thoughts. No fixed division in our liberated classrooms so that, so that the diversified learners, students, participants coming from diversified learners can be made to sit in a mixed way and when there is a there is a movement possible in order to participate in the learning activity i think the the divisions that exist among among our social strata divisions that are there among our society will also dissipate slowly start disappearing when we conduct pair work group work and make learning as 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 something that happens as a result of discussions. No fixed division. This is what. Now I'm going to show you another picture. This I, I always prefer. Instead of having a classroom where no possibility for the learners or the teacher to reach out to each other or to conduct any learning activity, look at this here. What kind of a classroom? This is a poorly furnished classroom. That's our real Indian classroom. But is there a dearth of learning? No. Look at them. Who is learning from where? Is the teacher speaking continuously? No. Look at the faces of the learners. And everybody is involved in the generation of learning, in the construction of learning. This is what I'm batting for. Teacher here actively moves around 
talks less, makes learners work more, is a facilitator, not a lecturer, promotes learning through activities. This kind of a teacher I'm pitching in for, and this kind of classroom, if better facilities are available, okay. But if facilities are not available, also okay by, by you know, casting our, you know, our, our, have a look at this picture and you will understand this. Teacher moves around, makes learners work, right? So these are the qualities of a liberated teacher. And what kind of a learner, learn plus a ah, learner is what I, what I prefer to the category of students. Student is a passive construct, whereas learn and learner, learn is a verb, there is action entailed in, while you say learners, so learners have also been called upon to participate in the construction of a learning. Intrinsically motivated becomes autonomous. Why intrinsically motivated? It is because a space has been given to the learners to go and talk to somebody in the classroom, go discuss, you know, a point with the with the learner. So intrinsically motivated. If you give them a chance to go and talk to others, and there is huge motivation, it may not happen abracadabra in one day, but slowly, gradually, it does happen. I want these changes to happen not only at Manu, not only at higher education level, from it should start from the scratch, from, from school level onwards. By the time they become students and uh, they have a lot of ambition. And one of the teachers, I, I, my apologies, I forgot to note down the name, said that my learners have no ambition to do anything. It is because they're, they're very shy, don't take part in any activity, related to learning and why it's because of the kind of uh, teacher-centered classrooms they've been asked to be silent all the time and that silent attitude is carried from one one layer of education into the other and has muted them permanently even when they are expected to be active at the higher education it has to happen from the school play active role you can see them is it a classroom? You might say that teacher is at fault because the teacher doesn't know how to manage a class. No. A, a classroom which is as noisy as possible is the most productive one, as long as the noise is meaningful, as noise is guided, as noise is, is, is for good. That's why learners play active roles, makes meaningful noise, and this is called peer learning is always the best form of learning that lasts for a lifelong. Ask any of you or ask yourself which part of your school education you, you remember a lot. You remember a lot the kind of uh, time that you spent with your friends in the, in the playground or in the discussion forum or in the quiz program. But I don't think you really remember your teacher continuously talking and you slipping into the sleep. Next one. And this is a learner. We, we need participants at higher education level. We don't need, we don't require a passive student. And the next one. What kind of materials, the learning materials must also take into account the learner's requirement and not anything and everything or sometimes what the teacher likes becomes learning material in choice-based credit system. But we must also know what kind of students we're going to have and, and learner's needs analysis followed by that. We also have to bring in the issues that they want into our classroom. Easy and interesting, well-prepared, more activities rather than giving Scope to teacher to, to explain, to translate, to speak continuously. And not just one mode, multiple modes, not, not given a lot of space and, and, and opportunity for the teacher to speak. There must be activities, reading, and sometimes listening material, sometimes watching, 
sometimes flipped kind of classroom collaboratively produced all you know uh, less a department there are colleagues in the department can come forward and also ask some of the students to take part in the preparation of learning material collaborative because learning is a collaborative activity and all these stakeholders are part of this collaboration accessible and available don't bring something as learning material which is not available but it must be accessible to the learners available in different modes it's available in voice mode audio visual mode in print mode in digital mode available in the library so therefore textbook don't have to have only one mode that's the printed one these areas i i am i am thinking of bringing in changes and i have been vociferously asking all the the stakeholders to also come actively together what kind of delivery method so far classroom delivery method is only one teachers talk and we also love it because you love we love our voice but here it may not produce learning but what are the things that are to be to be replayed to to be brought in to be to replace this present uh, praxis of uh, lecture matter learning centered game so teacher really has to work a lot in order to prepare these games and learners as teachers sometimes yes this is called project method this is called seminar method where we give them topics to our learners at the ma or post ma level and you go prepare notes prepare ppts come to a conference hall and give them an opportunity to not to replace us but to substitute us for the day on the on the topic when they prepare and nothing is a better form of learning than reading or dig into different books and 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 writing it down and again preparing ppts is i think there's a better form of learning learners and teachers share learning responsibility that's why that's where i say we must postulate not students we must construct active participants so our ma participants is the right word then our ma students tasks what kind of tasks project work quiz you know activity based teaching and learning that's right role plays different subjects require different uh, ways of conducting these activities if it's a language learning classroom urdu learning classroom why not role play why not pair work interview for instance elicitation for instance description for instance introduction for instance critical thinking is essentially part of all our our comprehension our comprehension activity is there listening the comprehension activity must have some query some questions some comprehension items which are latched on very strongly to this area of developing critical thinking as well individual pair group work project based learning blended learning what blended learning blended learning flipped classrooms blended learning has become the in thing as a result of the the presence of the pandemic covid 19 where 50% of uh, our classroom learning activities are online and 50% as ugc very clearly directs all of us to conduct offline i mean wishful thinking is also is also there alongside that first you try conducting classes online when the covid 19 subsides when we get back to our classes we can conduct the rest of the rest of the classroom activity in the face to face mode even if there is pandemic or not 50% or some 20% of our classrooms we can have via internet in in real time online yes but also in real time and then blended learning flipped classroom we can give them material to read and come back to in the in the in come back for discussion in the classroom the delivery method is one of the biggest areas that's where the teachers job job 
is the responsibility has been fixed. So the teacher now requires to be more enterprising, more creative, and take less of his talk time and give that opportunity for the, to the learners, to the participants to learn by, by conducting activities. Thereby, the diversified learners can also, can also participate with, the, with those, you know, there is a mixture of this, these groups could be formed, producing, producing some sort of homogeneity in the, in the classroom. And another one is evaluation, assessment. And today's assessment is based on secret question answer method. Till the question paper packet is cut and open, nobody knows what is, what is hidden inside. I am against, as a teacher, as a learner, against this kind of education, this kind of evaluation, this kind of assessment. It should not be a secret activity. Learners must also be involved in the evaluation. I have to ask them what kind of, how much of syllabus they are ready with, what sort of questions they like, is it short or longer? Because I feel that any examination system should encourage the learners to forge ahead than to discourage them. The philosophy of evaluation and assessment is not to discourage the learners, but to encourage them. In order to encourage them, we also have to have continuous assessment, continuous systems of assessment in place. Any examination should encourage the learners to, to, to go forward rather than to discourage them. Learners must be in, involved, formative and continuous evaluation system, and the task should not be very morose of WH questions. Let's get out of them. There must be some encouraging tasks. You don't have to give them sit in exam always. You can have open book system where application of the theories are to be encouraged more than writing the theories, which they anyway, it's part of rote learning. They memorize, they walk into the examination hall, they regurgitate on the papers and then go away unaffected. Is that what we are looking out for from our learners, from our participants? Instead, there is a theory, apply the theory to some area of life and, and come and make a presentation. Or write a paper and give it to us. I think we need to, liberate these, these areas, which are very much, uh, you know, pessimistic and, uh, and they are regressive in terms of uh, the development of uh, our, our learners. So I also request that there must be space for feedback. We only correct in a centralized examination hall. We only post marks. We don't even know whom we would have awarded the mass. Such secrecy is available here. But where is the scope for feedback? How would the learner, learners learn as to where they go wrong? So there must be space and place for feedback to the learners on how they're doing with the subjects of their choice. With this, uh, I, I would like to say that uh, Innovation is the need of the hour for inclusivity and to improve the speed and the quality of learning. All these areas, I, have, I haven't shown any scholarship with you. I have not quoted anybody here. These are commonplace ideas. These are very essential because common sense is not, is not a small thing. Things that we, we overlook of the, the architecture of our classroom. We overlook and we feel very confident that we know everything because we've been condemned to speak till we retire as teachers. These areas will have to be recast, recast in the context of 
what is uh, what is been the you know put forth by dr rubina salauddin others as the diversified heterogeneous nature of classrooms where teacher talk teachers examples are not enough for for inclusivity it is uh, it is active it is it is something else that is activity based le- uh, learning and pair work group work make learners equally responsible for the construction of learning is what i have been i have been discussing i have been presenting in the past one hour thank you very much for your valuable time hope i made sense